Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at the steps that you need to know in order to solve differential equations with Laplace transforms. Now, we have the steps on the side here, which we'll go through momentarily. But before we do that, let's go back earlier in your course when you were solving second order differential equations with constant coefficients that were non homogeneous. All right, so let's consider our problem here this second order ODE. It has constant coefficients, it's non homogeneous, and there's initial conditions. Now, there's a direct solution method going from the problem to your solution, y as a function of x or y as a function of t. And the direct method here, that makes use of the tools from calculus. Typically here, we break this into a few steps. First step might be finding your complementary solution. Second step, finding the particular solution. That's where the methods of undetermined coefficients and variation parameters comes in. And once you have your full solution, the complementary plus particular solution, then you can use your initial conditions to solve for the values of C1 and C2. And that might be already there a lot of work just for one problem. Complementary solution, particular solution, a lot of algebra there. And C1 and C2, that might also come down to a lot of algebra, maybe with a system of equations for C1 and C2. Now, it seems simple. We can solve this directly. But again, that's a lot of work. And what the method of Laplace transforms will do, it's an indirect method, but it basically does all these steps kind of at once. And we're going to see that in the diagram up top for what these steps look like. So let's go ahead and visualize in this diagram how we're going to solve this differential equation using Laplace transforms. Now, the first step here is we're going to take the Laplace transform of the differential equation. And since the Laplace transform is linear, it's a linear transformation, we can take the Laplace transform of each of the four terms, the second derivative, the first derivative, the function, and the non-zero right-hand side. And we can even pull the constants a, b, and c out front. So your end result looks something like this. Now, how you calculate those Laplace transforms, you want to make use of your Laplace transform table. Do not use the improper integral definition for a Laplace transform. I'm sorry if your professor is making you do that. That is going to be brutal. So do all your transforms here from your transformation table. Hopefully you're given one. I give my students one. All right, now what step one looks like in our indirect solution method in this diagram is we transform the differential equation into an algebraic equation in terms of our variable for Laplace transforms, which is S. All right, so what step one in your steps listed over there looks like is this. We go from this differential equation to an algebraic equation in S. Now, steps two and three kind of go together. That's all your algebra. You're going to take that algebraic equation in S, and first, you're going to solve it for F of S, or capital F of S where we're using that, that's the Laplace transform of our function y. So just make sure you're comfortable with the notation. Different professors, different courses use different notation. But we would say here the Laplace transform of the y, or function referenced here, that's what we're calling capital F of s. So steps 2 and 3 go together, solve for f of s. And then this is where almost all your work is. You're going to use algebraic techniques like partial fraction decomposition and algebraic tricks linked below to rewrite your f of s in terms of transformation pairs in your table. So steps two and three 
go from your algebraic equation to f of s. And steps two and three look like that. Now, what you want to keep in mind is you have the time or x domain and you have the frequency domain. So capital F of S, that's your solution in the frequency domain. Now we need to transform that back to our solution in X or the time domain. And that's where the last step, taking the inverse Laplace transform comes in. Now ideally, all the works from steps two and three, you've rewritten it so that way you can look up those transformations. So step four should be very straightforward if you put time in, particularly with step three. So step four, the last step in our indirect solution method here, we just go from f of s to our solution by taking the inverse Laplace transform of f of s. f of s is your solution in the frequency domain. We wanna get our solution in the time or x domain. And that's it. So we start with the differential equation, transform it to an algebraic equation, rewrite, and then do the inverse transformation. And we get to the same place, we get to our solution, y, and that's what we're writing down here as y as the inverse Laplace transform of f of s. And that's it. Now, again, all your work here is typically gonna be in steps two and three, and that's usually a lot of algebra. On average, any question or differential equation that you would solve with the direct method, it's probably the same amount of work if you were to go through the steps for solving that same differential equation with Laplace transforms. I hope you enjoyed seeing a sketch, a visualization of how your two methods work. You have your direct solution method and now Laplace transforms, which is an indirect solution method. And hopefully that's gonna to attribute to you really understanding this part of your differential equations course. Hope you enjoyed this video, this overview of the steps for solving Laplace transforms. If you did, leave a comment below and don't forget, like and subscribe.